Rajasthan, this is turning focus now to the core inflation part. What's the story playing out there? I mean, the core inflation spiked in this reading as well. Yes, exactly. Uh, you know, with such big increases in input costs, uh, of course, at some point, you know, producers have to pass it on to consumers. And that's what we are seeing. Uh, you know, the core inflation pressures were across the board, you know, personal goods, household goods, household services. So it's across the board. It's, it's, it's understandable. But my worry here remains that uh, the pass through from producers to consumers is still about 50 to 60 percent of what is generally passed on you know when when input prices are rising uh, and in fact if i drill in deeper it seems to me that for goods inflation uh, for goods producers a lot of the pass through has happened but for services producers a lot of the pass through has still not happened uh, and you know when that picks up uh, my worry is that core inflation could sort of see could, could, could remain sticky for longer. Uh, the other worry on the core front is that through the pandemic, we've seen you know, formalization. And we've also seen large firms getting larger. We've seen large firms gaining pricing power. Once they've increased prices because input costs went up, uh, uh, you know, they get comfortable with those prices. And even if at some point uh, input costs go down, they don't cut as fast as they raised the prices that they passed on to consumers. So that's another sort of source of, um, you know, stickiness that we may see in core inflation. That's interesting. So uh, just for the, uh, you know, if one uh, goes back to theory and, uh, you know, being that, okay, if you have a wide output gap, uh, you know, you will not see core inflation rise that quickly because, you know, pass through would be difficult, demand, is, demand conditions are weak. Why is that story not playing out right now in India? Yeah, that's a great question. As in, you know, even before global inflation began to rise in 2021, uh, right through 2020, we had core inflation in India, which was quite elevated. So what was really going on at a time growth was, you know, negative double digits. Well, I think the story is very sort of India centric. I think there were two forces at play. One force was what was happening to the small firms and the other one was what was happening to the big firms. Small firms saw a lot of disruption. You know, they have low cash buffers. Uh, when, you know, there were lockdowns, many of them were forced to shut down and there was a disruption in supply. We also see that many of the small informal firms are actually producers of necess necessary goods like clothes, food items, uh, for which the demand didn't really fall very much. So if the supply fell because these firms went out of business, it basically meant high prices. So that was one source of high core inflation coming from small firms. The story was exactly the opposite for the large firms, which, as I explained, have gained pricing power and generally kept prices higher than they could have. Uh, and that was another contributor to core inflation. And I think that's why we saw high core inflation through the pandemic period. Uh, so just to stitch together a couple of things you said, uh, you know, uh, if the pass through is still incom incomplete and this up for gap story uh, is not really playing out uh, as it uh, would be expected to, uh, sequential momentum over the next couple of months you're saying would remain high, even though the headline numbers would start to come off a bit. Yes, uh, look, um, it's, it's sort of hard for me to forecast whether it will sort of go higher because there's just so many moving parts. I don't know what's going to happen to co global commodity prices, to monsoon rains, but my sense is they will remain at current levels uh, for a fairly long time, perhaps all of this year. Uh, 